guys. Happy Friday. We are to chapter 9 and the title is Super Fudge. Fudge has a friend. <clears throat> His name is Daniel. He's pudgy with a lot of red hair and ears that stick out more than mine. The first time I saw him, he was standing in front of Uncle Feather's cage lecturing to Fudge. Mine birds are native to India and other parts of Asia. The common house mine is a bold, fearless bird somewhat larger than the robin. Robin, Robin, Uncle Feather repeated. Oh, just stop it and listen, Fudge told Uncle Feather. Don't you want to learn about yourself, Daniel continued? The mina is a noisy, sociable bird. I'll say, I said from the doorway, where I had been listening. Daniel turned around and stared at me. <clears throat> Who are you, he asked. Peter, Fudge's older brother, I told him. Who are you? Daniel, I'm six. I live at 432 Vine Street. You want to make something of it? He delivered the last sentence in a tough guy voice. So that it came out sounding like, you want to make something of it? Uh, not especially, I told him, trying not to laugh. Daniel turned back to Uncle Feather. Mina, Mina birds live to Im imitate the human voice. They can talk, sing, and whistle. The common house Mina is genius, species A. Daniel is a bird expert, Fudge said. So I see, I answered. You want to hear about the vulture, Daniel asked? Some other time, I told him. Daniel came for lunch on Saturday. Would you like peanut butter or tuna fish, Mom asked him. Tuna fish, Daniel said. You want to make something of it? Uh, no, Mom said, looking surprised at Daniel's, t Daniel's tough guy line. Tuna fish will be just fine. Where's the TV, Daniel asked. I always watch TV while I'm eating. It's in the living room, Fudge said. You don't have a TV in your kitchen? No, Mom said, we don't. I feel sorry for you, Daniel said, pushing back his chair. He stood up. I guess I'll have to take my lunch into the living room. We don't watch TV while we're eating, Mom said. So why don't you just sit down and wait until lunch is ready? Daniel pouted. I won't have much of an appetite without the TV. If you're not hungry, you don't have to eat, Mom said. TV shouldn't have anything to do with that. I was thinking that it wouldn't hurt, my, hurt the kid to skip a couple meals anyways. I watch Nickelodeon and the Cartoon Network, Fudge said, and if anybody cared, as if anybody cared, in all the commercials, I never miss the commercials. They're my favorite. My father used to write commercials, but now he's writing a book. One time I was actually in a commercial. I rode a toddler bike. No, you didn't, Daniel said. I did too, Fudge told him. I don't believe you, Daniel said. Mom brought the tuna fish sandwiches and two glasses of milk to the table. I don't eat anything with onions, Daniel said. I don't like lima beans or peas, and I only drink chocolate milk, and I cut the crust off my bread. He sounds a little bit spoiled, doesn't he? There are no onions, lima beans, or peas in the tuna fish, Mom said. I knew from her voice she was about ready to tell Daniel exactly what he could do with that lunch if he didn't like it. But she walked back to the pantry and brought out the, brought out the cocoa. You can put in as much as you'd like, she said, as she cut the crust off Daniel's sandwich. There. Now you should be all set. Was I in a commercial, Mom? Fudge said. Yes, Mom said. Fudge was in the toddler bike commercial. See, I told you. Did you get paid? Daniel asked. I don't know. Did I get paid, Mom? I wasn't there, Fudgy, remember? I was visiting Aunt Linda and the new baby in Boston. Oh, that's right, Fudge said. So he asked me, did I get paid, Peter? You got all the Oreos you could eat, I said. I got Oreos. I hate Oreos, Daniel said. On the same day that Daniel was eating his tuna fish sandwich without onions, peas, lima beans, or crust, Tootsie learned to crawl. One minute she was just rocking back and forth on all fours, and the next minute she was moving across the floors. Mom ran to get Dad and raced up the stairs for the camera, and for the rest of the day we took home movie, and to Tootsie was the star. Only Daniel was unimpressed. All babies crawl, he said. So why were they so excited? Because, yeah, all babies do crawl, but it's really exciting when it's the very first time that any kid does something. After a week of crawling, Tootsie became an expert. She could move so fast it was hard to keep up with her. Not only that, but she learned to pull herself up to a standing position. You couldn't leave anything around anymore. Whatever she found went straight into her mouth. And she found everything from crayons to spools of thread, from Lego toys to Dad's notebook. She chewed up three pages of his notes one afternoon, and it took Dad all night to try to glue them back together. Mom and Dad decided to baby-proof the house. They removed everything that Tootsie could possibly reach. Tootsie, Tootsie was very pleased with herself, she said. Ooh, ah. 
Turtle learned to crawl too. He'd move across the floor flat on his belly and Tootsie would chase him, laughing. Turtle and Tootsie became the best of friends. I kept the door to my room closed at all times. I wasn't tr taking any chances. Dad put up a gate at the top of the stairs and another at the bottom. You had to be careful not to step on Tootsie. She was almost always under your foot. Put her in the playpen, Fudge wailed one day after she got into his Legos and scattered them. She needs the freedom to explore, Dad said. Well, too bad. If she gets in my way, Fudge said, she'll just have to learn that I'm the big brother. And clunk, he stepped on her arm and Tootsie screamed. Do you think Fudge is old enough to know better than to do things like that? On the following Saturday, Jimmy Faru came to visit. Wow, I can't believe how much the baby's grown, he said when he saw Tootsie racing across the living room floor. When you moved, she was about the same size as my cat, and now she's a, she's a regular baby. Pa, 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 Tootsie said, pulling herself up on my legs. What's she saying? Nothing, just baby talk, I told him. Jimmy was even more impressed with Uncle Feather than he was with Tootsie. Wow. That's some bird, Jimmy said. He speaks French. Say bonjour, I told Jimmy. Bonjour, birdie, Jimmy said. Bonjour, silly, Uncle Feather answered. I laughed. Jimmy didn't. Hey, turkey, turkey brain, my name's Jimmy. Can you say Jimmy? Say that. Say that. Say that. No, dummy, it's Jimmy. Dummy Jimmy. Dummy Jimmy. No, it's just plain Jimmy. Plain Jimmy. Plain Jimmy. I give up, you turkey brain. Turkey, turkey, Jimmy, turkey. Stop it! Jimmy shouted. Stop it! Stop it! I quit! Quit, quit, quit! Jimmy, Jimmy finally laughed. Some bird! Alex came over to meet Jimmy. He said, so you're the great Jimmy Fargo. Who said I was great? Jimmy asked. Well, the way Peter's always talking about you, yeah. Well, the way he's always talking about you, I figured you must be the great Alex Santo. I am, Alex said. Well, then, I'm the great Jimmy Fargo. After that, it was downhill all the way. It's hard to be caught in the middle between your best friends. I think Mom knew I was having a hard time because she said, How would you boys like to go to the movies this afternoon? What's playing? Jimmy asked. Superman. I already saw that, Jimmy said. So did I, I said, but I wouldn't mind seeing it again. I saw it twice, Jimmy said. I've never seen it once, Alex said. It was better the second time, Jimmy said, and I'll bet it will be, it will be still better the third time, Mom said. Okay, Jimmy said, I'll go. He bent down to tie his shoelaces. Mom said, wonderful, and the three of you can take Fudge and Daniel. I had a quick conference with Alex and Jimmy. I don't care if Fudge comes with us, as long as I don't have to sit next to him, Jimmy said. Same for me, Alex said, and I won't sit next to the other one either. The other one is a nerd. Same for me, Jimmy said. I went back to Mom. Okay. We'll take them, but we won't sit next to them. Well, that's reasonable, Mom says. It's a deal, <clears throat> I told Alex and Jimmy. We walked into town. We were too early to buy tickets, so we showed Jimmy his father's painting in the window of the gallery. I dressed up as Anita's anger for Halloween, Alex said. My costume was outstanding, if I say so myself. You don't think you're too great, do you, Jimmy said. I'm just telling the truth, Alex said. I can't believe this guy, Jimmy whispered to me. He's usually not like this, I said back. I never should have gotten them two together, I thought. They really couldn't stand each other, and they, the way they were making me so miserable. Hey, let's go in and introduce Jimmy to Beverly, I said, trying to sound cheerful. Beverly greeted us. Well, if it isn't Alex and Peter and Fudge. And Daniel, Daniel said, I'm six. I live at 432 Vine. Glad to meet you, Daniel, Beverly said. And this is Jimmy Fargo, I told Beverly. You know, Fargo, Frank's son, Beverly asked. That's right. I just love your father's paintings. They're so original. He is working on a new one, Jimmy said. It's called Salamis on Parade. Sounds fascinating, Beverly said. My, f oh, s salami? <laughs> my father likes salami, Jimmy said. Salami and onion sandwiches are my favorite. I don't eat anything with onions, Daniel said. We know, I said. Salami and onions, Jimmy said. My father could just about live on salami and onions, Beverly laughed. I'll bet he doesn't do much kissing. That's right, because onions are stinky. That's why my mother moved to Vermont. Well, Beverly said, I'd certainly like to meet your father someday. 
Maybe we can arrange that, I said, thinking that Beverly and Mr. Fargo might really like each other. And Jimmy must have been thinking the same thing because he said he doesn't eat salami and onions every day. On Sundays, he likes he likes to eat eggs. I don't eat anything with onions or lima beans or peas, Daniel said. I hate crust on my bread and I only drink chocolate milk. You're a pretty fussy eater, Beverly said. That's right, Daniel said. You want to make something of it? No, Beverly said. I certainly don't. We have to go now, I said. We're going to see Superman. Have a good time. I wondered if anybody ever went to the gallery besides us. I'd never seen a customer in there. Outside, a line had formed in front of the movie theater. As we were walking to the end of it, I spotted Joanne McFadden. She was with Sharon, who's always looking at the ground or the sky, and Elaine, who likes to punch guys in the stomach. I guess Joanne spotted me, too, because she called Peter and waved me over there. Give me your money and I'll buy your ticket, she said. That way you won't have to stand at the end of the line. Mom had given me enough to treat Alex, Jimmy, and Daniel. So I passed the bill to Joanne and stood right behind her. When the wind blew, her hair hit my face. And it got all in my nose. Well, Elaine said after we had our tickets, aren't you going to introduce us to him? She nodded in Jimmy's direction. Oh, sure. Jimmy, meet Elaine, Sharon, and Joanne. Jimmy looked at Sharon for a long time. Sharon looked at the sky. I'm Daniel, the little the little creep said. I'm six. I live at 432 Vine Street. That's nice, Elaine said. And who are you? She asked Fudge. Fudge Hatcher. Your little brother, Joanne asked me. Uh-huh. I never knew you had such an adorable little brother. Joanne had never seen so said so many words to me at once. Fudge smiled. Adorable? That's me. And I'm Daniel. I'm six. We know, Elaine said. You want to make something of it? Daniel asked in the best tough guy voice. Yeah, Elaine said. Put them up. She made two fists and held them up to Daniel. You think she's probably kidding. Probably so. Daniel started to cry. Don't hit me. Please don't hit me. I'm only six. He covered his face with his hands. I'm not going to hit you, Elaine said. I only hit... People my own age, right, Alex? And with that, she belted Alex right in the gut. Cut it out, Alex shouted. A lot of shouted at Elaine. Daniel jumped up and down singing. Would you stop, Elaine said to Daniel, or I'll do it to you too. You promised you wouldn't, Daniel whined, and I'm only six, remember? Why don't you all just cut it out, Sharon said, looking at the ground. We went inside and stopped at the candy counter to buy popcorn and Cokes. Then we found seats for the kindergarten babies, got them settled and crossed over to the other side of the theater where we found an empty row for all six of us. I don't know if I would let my five, a six-year-old go to the movies with their older brothers who were only in sixth grade. I don't know about that. <sighs> Alex went in first, then Jimmy, then me, then Joanne, Sharon, and Elaine. I wonder if Joanne... <clears throat> had planned all of this. When the picture show started, Joanne offered me some of her popcorn, and I reached into the carton to get some, and then I offered her some of mine, just to be nice. Right when Superman was about to come on, I felt something icy cold slither down my back, and I yelped. Fudge was hanging over the back of my seat with a handful of ice cubes from his Coke. Hi, Peter. I'm gonna. But there was no way I could catch him. He was already racing up the aisle. Here, Joanne said, handing me a Kleenex. Could you do it, I asked. I don't think I can reach all the way down my back to get all this ice out. Joanne mopped off my neck and then my back. And when she finished, she put the, she put everything back down. And we both went out looking for fudge. When the movie ended, Joanne, Sharon, and Elaine walked home in one direction, and we walked home in the other. So what's it like to be in love, Alex asked me. Uh, excuse me? Oh, what are you talking about, I said. What are you talking about, Alex mimicked, and Jimmy said. So when's the wedding? Cut it out, will you? By the time we got home, Alex and Jimmy were talking and laughing as if, it, if they'd been best friends for hundreds of years, and I kind of felt left out. Dad had cooked a big pot of spaghetti and Daniel was eyeing it until mom told him how many onions had gone into the sauce. 
Not only that, but mom had fixed a bowl of peas as a side dish. And that was funny because we never have anything with spaghetti but bread and salad. I don't eat anything with onions. And I don't eat peas either, Daniel said. What else do you have? Nothing, mom told him. Then I guess I'll go home for supper, Daniel said. I thought I saw mom kind of smile. Do you think she might have planned that? I don't know. After supper, Alex went home to get his sleeping bag, and him and Jimmy both slept on the floor in my room. I wondered why I didn't feel better about the two of them being friends. Just because they liked each other didn't mean they didn't like me, but I had a hard time convincing myself. So you think he might be feeling a little bit jealous because he's used to having them both one-on-one, -on -one, and now they're having to learn how to be like a three group of friends. For the next week, Fudge walked around talking to himself. To most people, he is Fudge Hatcher, a regular little boy. Only his trusty minor bird and his friend, Daniel, know the truth. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than Superman. Do you remember when I was born, he asked me one morning? Yes. Did I really grow inside of Mommy's tummy? Yes. Oh, he sounded disappointed. Because if I did grow inside of Mommy's tummy... I can't be from another planet. Take it from me, I said. You're definitely from another planet. A few days later, Daniel told Fudge that he had been adopted as a baby. So Daniel might be from another planet, Fudge said. Yeah, I thought. That would explain a lot. And he might even be able to fly. Don't count on it, said. I, count on it I said. Daniel is my best friend, Fudge said. If it turns out he's from another planet, he's going to take me there to visit. Swell, I told him. Don't hurry back. You're just jealous because you don't have a friend who can fly. I don't even have a friend from another planet, I said. Too bad for you, Peter. And he took off, flapping his arms and calling, It's a bird! It's a plane! Chapter 10 is Santa Who.